and the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven. That means tells you heaven is up. If you ain't going up, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Bethel. Go ahead and have your seats, please. I'm going to bring you up to date what we have been talking. We are talking about leaving a legacy. David said in Psalm 71 verse 18, he said, when I am old, don't let me die before I have taught this generation about the precept of God. I just turned 70 last week. I got to double up in pouring myself into the one who wants me to pour into them. Don't kid yourself. Everybody don't want you. And David served his generation. Then he went to be with the Lord. Paul says to Timothy, all that I have taught you, you go ahead and teach. Only to the faithful one who will teach someone else. So the message should be going on all the time. Die empty. When they bury you, don't let them bury your life. Live through the next generation. Up to four generations. Share your life. The good, the bad, the ugly. Your mistakes. Focus on others. Invest them. Pass it on. The greatest gift you give is not only money and houses. Eternal thing. God is a God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Don't let your family die without you passing the heavenly treasure. We talked about Elijah throwing his mantle on Elisha. So to the senior ministers, make sure you ask God who is the next one in a line for you to throw your mantle. God help Moses with Joshua. Elisha, Timothy and Titus to Paul. But one interesting thing was, they were all servants. They serve the man of God. God is not unfaithful to forget the labor of love that you serve. Serve without agenda. Oh, some people are slick. Let me serve. And while they're serving, they're praying for you to die. How would you like to know? Elijah knew. Elisha knew. But Elisha served him 20 plus years.
But when Elijah called Elisha, Elisha had to kiss goodbye to his business, to his family. We don't want to give up nothing, but we want the anointing. We don't want to pay the price. You know what? Pastor Adeboy, when he was here, we went to Redeem Church, uh, Love Church, and the message Pastor Adeboy preached very simple. Precious things are costly. He said you can buy Mercedes Benz or you can buy Rolls Royce. But if you want Rolls Royce, it will cost you four or five times. In the same way, if you put a value on the anointing upon man of God, it will cost you. What he did to get it, you will have to do double. But we are just sitting around waiting for a double portion and don't want to do nothing. No discipline, no sacrifice. I had it coming. I deserve it. I serve. And isn't that interesting? Joshua didn't go to Moses and say, dude, look here, I'll serve you now. I'm ready. Let the man whom you're serving tell you you're ready. Because he knows something about you that you are in denial. Let me get away. He knows something about you because everybody is perfect in their own eyes. And everybody is ready yesterday. He kissed him goodbye and started serving. Don't know how many years he served. But now a day comes when several people knew that Elijah was to be taken away. People in Gilgal knew. People in Bethel knew. People in Jordan, Jericho knew it. People in Jordan knew it. Everybody knew, included Elijah and Elisha. So when it was about time to take an up, they were traveling for Gilgal. So this is my message. We're going to talk about one today and later on the other. Four stages you must go through to get your anointing. You start at Gilgal. Gilgal, like I mentioned to you last week, week before, That's the place, Joshua 5 and 9. They were free. People of God were free. And yet, they were not free indeed. That's why Jesus said, John 8, if the Son of God set you free, then you are free indeed. Let me ask you a question. Are you free or are you free indeed? They were free. They were not in a bondage in Egypt, but guess what? In their mind, in their thinking, 
they were still in the bondage. So Gilgal is a place that you have to say goodbye to the world. And see, that's where we lose a lot of people. Lord, I want to follow you, but don't ask me something stupid like giving up my world. Talk to me. That's what Coco was preaching Wednesday night. How can you be in a church serving God for 20 years and you're still struggling with the same thing you were struggling when you was out there in the world? You used to smoke. Now you smoke something that is legal. Look at your life. Not anybody. Look at your life. What are the demons you used to fight? You're still fighting. And when I say give up the world, let me break it down huh? in three areas. The world, the flesh, and the devil himself. When we say the world, we are talking about the world system. And Jesus prayed in John 17, the whole chapter, the high priest, in prayer of intercession by Jesus. He said, Lord, they are in this world, but they are not out, oh God. He said, keep them. Let me tell you something. God will keep you in this world by his grace. If you want to be kept. There are Christians, they don't want to be kept. They don't want to be kept. They will come with their excuse. You know, that's my weakness. And then they're going to throw everybody else, you know. Everybody got some battle to fight. Don't put me with your mess. <laughs> you know, everybody got something to... No, talk. Let me talk about you. Everybody got a weakness. We all got to fight. No, I don't. That means you don't want to be sanctified. That's all it is. And nobody wants to talk about sanctification. I'm saved by the grace of God. But the grace that you receive will teach you to live a sanctified life. Romans 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed. I mean, don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. But be ye transformed. Let's start. Say conformed, <clears throat> transformed. The word calm means to be with. We don't be walking with the world. Conform, meaning you're walking with the world. As a matter of fact, you're leading the world. I didn't say that. Coco said that Wednesday night. You got a Super Bowl party and you're the one partying. You're the one hosting it. Don't feel guilty because you're going to watch Super Bowl tonight. Conform means to be with. Make up your mind. Are you with God or are you with the world? To be 
be afraid of the world. You are an enemy of God. Do not be conformed, but be transformed. And this is the message. There's a guy in a jail. He used to go to church. And he told me where he went to church and all that. I said, yeah, you went to the church, but you were never transformed. Are you transformed? Have you said bye to the world? Or are you still kissing, calling the world? Emailing and texting it. Maybe just thinking about you. Miss you. I don't know what's up. See, see, you're going to fail in, in step number one, Gilgal. You ain't going to go to no Bethel. You ain't going to go to Jericho. You ain't going to go to Jordan to go get the double portion. Our problem is this. We flunk in a first grade. If you cannot say goodbye to the world, what is the world? First John 2.15, in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. And I'm not going to go into detail about that. I have already preached on those things. Lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes. What is the lust of the eyes? What you see is what you want. I saw that fruit. It sure was good. That's what Eve says. In other words, it is covetousness. It's greed. Pride of life. Meaning, all eyes on me. Now is more important than eternity. I want it now. I ain't got the money, but don't worry about it. I'm going to be in a debt up to here, but I will look good. My message today is this. Have you said bye to the world? Or when the world calls you, do you answer? Forget it. You call the world. Man, it's Friday and I ain't got nothing to do. Let me call the world. What's up? And listen to this. Elijah said to Elisha, do stay here in Gilgal. Now look at his answer. As surely as the Lord lives, you know, Lord is going to live forever anyway, and you yourself live. Meaning what? Look at me. I'm going to serve you till you die. Huh. They don't serve you when you're alive. When I went to Nigeria, people were asking me. Well, one of the pastors from here called me. Pastor, how do I get a pleasure to stay at daddy's house in Nigeria? I told him, serve him for 40 years. Hey. <laughs> See, we don't want to serve. Elisha say, I don't care what you, I don't care how long you live, I'm going to serve you. Because it is not the anointing I want, 
I know a double portion, but you know what? Double portion anointing comes God's way is by serving. So don't pray. Pastor, how long are you going to live? I'm going to outlive you. I will serve you. Okay, for the sake of time, I'm going to rush through this. The world. Have you kissed goodbye to the world? Flesh. My God, my God, we don't want to talk about it. Romans 8 and 8 says, Fleshly is enmity against God. And look at here. Don't let flesh control you. You know why flesh controls us? Because we have not put on Christ. Romans 13, 11 to 14. Go home and study this. Romans 8 and 8. Romans 13, 11 to 14. He say, don't let flesh dominion over you. Why? You put on Christ. Galatians 5, 19 through 11. Read the list. Galatians 5, 19 through 11. If you don't know what flesh is, read it. It will tell you. Okay, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Devil is called Antichrist. Opposing Christ. Number one, full of pride. And Bible says the first thing about the devil was he was crafty. So if you're crafty, I'm going to stop there. Okay, my last word, then you go. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Gilgal. The Lord say, I will remove the reproach. Meaning, I will bless you so much you will not even think about Egypt. Let me read this. I know you have never thought of it. Okay, somebody's, uh, you know, the Lord's Prayer. How does it end? Our Father, Uh -huh. See, that's our problem. That's our problem. We say, deliver us from evil. No, 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 no. Deliver us from the evil one. You know why the devil has dominion over you? Because you haven't asked the Lord to help you deliver from the evil one. The accuser of the brethren. So my prayer is this, this year. You want the anointing, you want to follow this, please do me a favor, do one thing, pass the first grade. Kiss goodbye to the world, the flesh, and the devil. Until you do this, forget the anointing. I know it is a simple message, but I know. Father God, I pray today. I know we want to go with you. He is the shepherd and I'm the sheep and I follow him. 
Father, we don't follow you because we tied up with the world. Search us today. Are we friend of God or are we friend of the world and the flesh and the devil? Until we remove this, we cannot go to Bethel. But thank God, Elisha said, forget Gilgal, I am going to Bethel. Because Bethel is the place that will take me to the anointing. But I must leave Gilgal. Or you might have to leave Gal. What do you have to leave today? In the imagination of your mind. <clears throat> way in your mind. Do I want God or I do want this world? World will give you what you want. Devil will give you all that you want, the fame and fortune and all that thing. But when it is said and done, he say, you know what? You forgot the wages of sin is still death. And he will ask you for your soul. But when you say goodbye to the world, you say yes. To the living God. I pray this year we will seek God and his kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Amen.